Good morning, first grade. Today is Monday, April 6th, and this is such an exciting week. Yesterday was Palm Sunday, which is now the start of what we call Holy Week. There are so many incredible events that take place during this week in Jesus' life, right up until we get to Easter. And so this week is called Holy Week. All of these special things that happen that we have started talking about already. Let's go ahead and start with our devotion. Make sure you've completed two pages of your fun folder, and let's take a look at our devotions. Okay, so in our devotion, we're kind of moving ahead a little bit of where we actually would be in Holy Week. So Holy Week started with Palm Sunday yesterday, and then today on Monday, um, there are a few things that took place. We've already mentioned how Jesus went to the temple. Remember, he saw a poor widow there who was giving money to the temple and he saw her great sacrifice and was amazed by her faith. Um, another thing that happened at the temple, maybe you already know this story, but we didn't mention it here, but Jesus was there at the temple and people needed to buy some animals for their animal sacrifice for Passover. And unfortunately, there were some money changers there who were not being honest and fair with how they were exchanging the money. They were actually cheating people out of their money. And Jesus saw what was happening and he said, my house should be a house of prayer, right? My house being the temple, the church, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. And Jesus was not happy with how he saw these money changers were treating the people. And so he actually got really upset and he started to turn over their tables, knocking things over because he did not like how they were doing things. Now, this really got people's attention, and there are several other things that took place during Holy Week. We've already talked about how on Thursday, Jesus and his disciples had their last meal together, their last supper, with the bread and the cup representing Jesus' body and his blood. Though at the time, the disciples still didn't even know, really, that that meant he was going to be crucified. So, continuing, that night, after they had um, had their last supper, their last meal together, Jesus knew the time was um, getting very close to when he was going to be betrayed by one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot. And Judas had received 30 pieces of silver in order to trade Jesus over to the religious leaders at the time. Jesus went to a garden called the Garden of Gethsemane. And a couple years ago when I went to Israel, I also visited the Garden of Gethsemane. And I want you to imagine this place. It's actually a really peaceful place. It is a place where uh, there are a lot of olive trees, and these olive trees are just kind of growing on this hillside. It's really beautiful. But one thing I do want to mention to you, which maybe you wouldn't know if you haven't been there, is that the Garden of Gethsemane is located in a place that is near two other locations. So imagine with me, you're in the Garden of Gethsemane. You're surrounded by these beautiful trees, and it's a very peaceful place. But I want you to notice, imagine that on one side, that's the city of David, Jerusalem is on one side and Jesus knew what would happen to him in Jerusalem. He knew his future there would involve a lot of sacrifice and pain. But on the other side of Garden of Gethsemane is if you go up the hillside, you can continue to go up there and then if you really walk for quite a distance, then it ends up turning into like a desert area. It's a place where sometimes people would go to escape and try and run from maybe the government or leaders who were looking for them. It was a pretty well-known escape route. So imagine Jesus in this place, the Garden of Gethsemane, knowing that in one direction, that would be Jerusalem, part of God's great plan, but still a lot of pain and the other side could be a, an escape route but it wouldn't be God's plan. Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane at night with just a few of his disciples and he asked them to pray with him and he himself needs to pray and so it says right here from Matthew 26 verse 39 Jesus went a little bit further and then he put his face towards the ground and he prayed my father if it is possible take this cup of suffering away from me. Meaning his death on the cross, it really was so terrible. And he actually, in this moment, he is fully God, but he is also fully human. And he knows what that pain will be. But let what you want be done, not what I want. 
Jesus went to the garden and he prayed to his heavenly father. Jesus promised to do what God wanted, even though it would be very hard. Jesus prayed for strength. He loved all people. And he wanted them to know God and to be able to spend heaven with them someday. Jesus wanted his heavenly father's will to be done more than his own will, not just what he wanted. I'm so thankful that Jesus truly thought of me more than what he thought of his own pain and suffering. Repeat after me. I want to be brave like Jesus. Okay, we're going to go ahead and read one more. So at this time, Jesus is in the garden and then it is the time where Judas is leading the religious leaders to Jesus to find him and to arrest him with some Roman soldiers. Jesus' disciples are there with him and they see these Roman soldiers approaching and they think they need to defend Jesus. So they start to act out with violence to try and protect Jesus from this, uh, uh, this arresting moment. But this is what Jesus responds with. Jesus says in Matthew 26, verses 53 and 54, Do you think that I can't ask my Heavenly Father for help? He would send an army of more than 70,000 angels right away. But then how would the scriptures be true? The scriptures say that it must happen this way. Judas took some soldiers to the garden and the soldiers arrested Jesus, even though he had done nothing wrong. Jesus' disciples were very upset. They wanted to save Jesus, but Jesus stopped them. He knew he had to go with the soldiers. It was part of his Heavenly Father's plan. Jesus followed his Heavenly Father's plans, even though he could have stopped it. Repeat after me, help me follow your plans, God. Let's go ahead and think about our prayers for this morning. Um, of course, we're going to pray for this holy week and thank God for his amazing love for us and his great plan to save us from our sins and to help us to have an eternity with him. Let's, of course, remember to pray for each one of you and your families, praying for all the people who are sick and all the doctors and nurses that are helping them, that they have all the supplies that they need. And pray that we um, continue to do our very best with our learning, even though it's a very different situation. We're going to pray for Giddy Selda and all compassion students too. Let's hold our hands, bow our heads, close our eyes as we pray for today. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Holy Week. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for Jesus following your plan. We pray for Giddy Selda all Compassion students, all BCS students, and their families to be healthy and safe. Please heal all the people who are sick and help all the doctors and nurses who are helping those who are sick. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's continue with our routines for the morning. Let's look at our new memory verse for this week. Okay, our memory verse, let's say it all together. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Romans 5, 8. I love this verse because it's such a great reminder. We don't really deserve God's amazing love for us, and yet he freely shares it with us. Sometimes we make people earn a gift from us, but God's gift of salvation is a free gift for everyone, for all time. What a mighty God we serve. Let's take a look at our affirmations. Go ahead and repeat after me. I reach my goals. I do my best in my work. And that's totally true, first grade. I've seen the work that you've turned in. You are doing a great job. I'm so proud of you. I also want to mention our spelling words for this week. Our spelling words have a pattern with the kind of ending that we're adding to a base word. For example, if we take a look at number one, 
Number one has the word land with the base word here and it's ending ed to make it land ed, land ed. But then also we're looking at the ending ing. So our base word here for number two is check, check. And we add our ending ing becomes the word checking. Three is telling, four, missed, as in I missed your phone call. Five, filled, six, sleeping, seven, bluffing. Bluffing is another word for lying, not telling the truth. Eight, planted. Our sentence is, the birds are sleeping. Very good, and let's take a look at our words to know, because this is the last week for this set of words to know. I hope you've been practicing. Let's go ahead and say them all together. Carry, kind, put, saw, butter, were, work, person, always, eight, arms, seven, warm, ready, body, about, because, draw, happy, teacher, part, tiny. Okay, and to finish off our devotion for today, let's take a look at our resurrection eggs. I'm gonna take a look at five and six. Here are the ones for five. Okay, this is kind of moving a little bit ahead in our Easter story from where we are in our devotions, but it is an important part of the story. Okay, so I'll show you here. Here's the picture. And it says Matthew 27, verse 26. So Pilate, Pilate uh, was the Roman leader uh, at that time, released Barabbas to them. Barabbas was a criminal, but he was let out of prison. Um, but he ordered that Jesus would be whipped. Then he was turned over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. And that's five. And continuing there, this is, again, another very serious part of the story. Some of these parts of the story are really hard to even read or hear about because it really does make us feel so sad, but it helps us understand how much God loves us. He was willing to endure all of this. So this comes from Mark chapter 15, verse 17, and it says, They dressed him in a purple robe, and they wove thorn branches into a crown and placed it on his head. Right? We talk about this crown of Thorns, crown of thorns. Okay, first grade, I am so proud of you. Thank you for checking in each day or every couple of days to do these videos with me. I really wish that I could see you and that we could be together, but I know that you are doing great work. I am proud of you. Thank you for all that you're doing. Make sure you tell moms and dads thank you for their help because moms and dads are doing amazing things. And because I can't give you a hug, make sure you go and you hug mom and dad. Tell them that you love them. All right, first grade, have a great day.